this week. Fox 5's Lisa Evers with another exclusive look inside an NYPD gang bust. They'll be fanning out to go and take down these suspects. Plus, a 15-year-old charged in a Brooklyn stabbing and a new crackdown on rampant shoplifting in New York City. The challenge is your job versus your safety. Right now, Fox 5's Crime in the City. Here are the crimes across the five boroughs. We start this week in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, where two popular drill rappers are busted in a massive gang takedown. Chef G and Sleepy Hollow, along with 30 other men and women, are charged in a sweeping gang murder conspiracy case. The Brooklyn DA says they allegedly use money from their music careers for guns and to offer bounties on the heads of rival gang members. We had an exclusive look inside the NYPD investigation that helped build the case. 22 teams made up of the NYPD's Gun Violence Suppression Division and the Warren Squad were briefed about the case, which stretches back four years. Over the coming hours, they took alleged eight trade gang members into custody. Some were already behind bars, like Michael Williams, better known as drill rapper Chef G, who previously pleaded guilty to gun possession. He was booked on new charges. Police say he controlled the streets, even though he was locked down. And let's talk about Chef. If Chef said something, it happened. A simple text. We got to get a big one. That simple text created a war. The detectives and officers from the NYPD Gun Violence Suppression Division, along with the Warrants Division, have all gotten their assignments, over 200 of them. They'll be fanning out to go and take down these suspects who have been pre-indicted on very serious allegations. The teams took the suspects not already incarcerated into custody without a single shot being fired. Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez says the gang members use more than 30 guns to threaten or eliminate their rivals, proudly posting and boasting on social media phone videos. This surveillance video, where they pop out with guns from a sunroof and window, shows one of the street shootings included in the case. The DA says charges include murder, attempted murder, weapons possession, and other crimes. In total, Total Gonzalez says there was one murder, four attempted murders, and 12 non-fatal shootings. What we allege and what we learned during the course of this investigation is that Chef G used a lot of the money that he earned to help facilitate uh, further gang activity. He encouraged gang members to participate in violent crimes. The sheer violence in this case would stick out to me. Uh, the total disregard for civilians. The magnitude of it. It stretches through a good portion of Brooklyn South. It's uh, in the 40s. It's in Kings Highway. And it's all the way down to East 18th and Keaton. And it just really shows the command the A Trey Crips and their elite alliances had over the Brooklyn South area. At the 77th Precinct in Crown Heights, the suspects were brought in to be booked. There's just many facets of the investigation um, that cover a wide range. That have, to be, uh, that have to be vetted. After being arrested on the new charges, Chef G and two other suspects were taken to central booking. The celebrity status of the drill rappers increased their clout and influence on the streets. The NYPD says it is not targeting drill rappers. What they're going after are people responsible for gun violence. Well, everybody looks up to these guys, so, you know, it's, it's a shame that they're using this platform, you know, the music platform to actually, you know, uh, carry out, you know, a negative message. Uh, when I say negative message, you know, I'm not talking about the music, it's what they're actually doing. District Attorney Eric Gonzalez says his office, along with the NYPD, will continue to target the most violent individuals responsible for the gun violence that has terrorized so many neighborhoods. If convicted, those arrested in this case are looking at the possibility of decades behind bars. Next, in Lower Manhattan, the man who killed eight people with a truck in 2017 learns his fate at last. Saifullo Saipov was described by prosecutors as an unabashed terrorist and a proud murderer who deserved no leniency. Today, the Islamic extremist was sentenced to eight consecutive life sentences, more than 200 years in prison, after he was convicted of killing eight people in that Halloween terror-inspired attack back in 2017. Inside the courtroom today, Saipov had the chance to speak, and he did so for nearly an hour. There was no remorse from the defendant. Instead, he spent much of the time praising the Quran and justifying jihad. Prosecutors wanted the death penalty for Saipov, saying he never showed any compassion for the people he 
fatally killed in that it may have been planning to kill more people that day. But the jury couldn't reach a unanimous decision when they deliberated back in March. When asked today if he did have any remorse or any regrets, Saipov sat motionless and wouldn't answer the question. It was Halloween six years ago when Saipov rented a Home Depot truck and mowed down pedestrians and bicyclists on a popular bike path that runs along the West Side Highway in Lower Manhattan. Saipov was shot by an NYPD officer moments after that crash when he came out of his truck yelling, God is great, in Arabic. Two Americans and six tourists were killed that day. Family and friends of those victims spoke outside federal court before the sentencing was handed down. We'll hear from them first and then one of the jurors who decided Saipov's fate. I decided to forgive, in fact. Um, but, you know, to forgive because I, I didn't want to give opportunity to hatred, to rage. Because let's be fair, rage, hatred, what is it creating? Destruction. These are complete strangers. We all got to know each other, and we all bore the brunt of this responsibility in such a sober, compassionate fashion. It really reinvigorated my faith in the U.S. justice system. Next, we visit Manhattan and the epicenter of the shoplifting crisis in New York City. New numbers from the NYPD tonight. And they paint a picture of just how bad shoplifting has gotten in the city. Since 2018, thefts have gone up every year with the largest jump, 44% in 2022. Mayor Adams says repeat offenders were behind a third of those thefts last year. He's rolling out a new plan that has a catchy acronym and everything, but will it actually produce results? All right, Linda Schmidt live in Midtown with the details. Linda. Well, one thing is for certain there, guys, people are definitely sick of all of this shoplifting that we have been seeing and hearing about now for a couple of years. And in fact, today, the mayor saying that last year there were more than 22,000 arrests for shoplifting and repeat offenders were a big part of that. In fact, 327 people were responsible for 30 percent of that shoplifting. I was in Brooklyn and it was horrible. Letitia Page was a manager at a clothing store. Having to deal with shoplifting is the hardest thing because the challenge is your job versus your safety. Raza Han works at 8th Avenue Gifts at 35th Street. People, they steal always, you know, they come in store, they grab, you know, stuff. It happens every day, and New Yorkers are tired of seeing merchandise locked up in their neighborhood pharmacies and other stores to prevent shoplifting. Mayor Adams is now rolling out a new plan he believes will cut down on retail theft. The district attorneys from all five boroughs standing with the mayor on this approach. Repeat offenders are a major problem. 250 people in 2023 have been arrested almost 2,500 times. Again, that's 30 percent. Who are these people? 52 percent are convicted felons. The new crackdown includes giving first-time offenders intervention programs instead of prosecution, de-escalation training for retail employees, establishing neighborhood retail watch groups to share information about a theft in real time with one another and the police, and installing kiosks in stores to connect would-be thieves with social service programs. Ralph Salento is retired from the NYPD and currently an adjunct professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. When people come in that were just about to steal, they won't because they realize that stealing uh, is, is a source of a, a, a different problem for them. So they're going to use the kiosk to access social services. I'm sorry, but that's just a pipe dream. Salento says there is one deterrent to crime. Choplifters need to be caught, they need to be prosecuted. Over at Grand Central, the MTA is looking to fight fare evasion with new high-tech turnstiles. The MTA is ready to test out a new turnstile designed to cut down on fare evasion. The two new models were unveiled today inside of Grand Central Terminal. Both feature clear, tall doors that swing open. The MTA also demonstrated how the alarm system works if somebody tries to follow another person in without paying. A study by the agency found that fare evasion cost it $690 million just last year. Moving to Brooklyn now, a 15-year-old charged in the stabbing of another teen at a park. 
A 15 year old now charged the stabbing of an 18 year old inside a Brooklyn Park. Investigators say the two were involved in a dispute inside a McLaughlin Park back on May 3rd. Police say the suspect stabbed the victim multiple times in the torso. The 15 year old is now charged with attempted murder, assault and criminal possession of a weapon. Staying in Brooklyn, new videos released of the suspect in the sex assault of a woman asleep in her apartment. Police releasing new video in the case of a woman sexually assaulted in Brooklyn. This is the man authorities are looking for. You can see the images here in the incident that happened on Friday out in Brooklyn Heights. According to investigators, that suspect entered the woman's apartment just before 2 a.m. while she was asleep. Police say he sexually assaulted the 43 year old victim and when she woke up, he left the scene with her wallet. That's his sketch right there. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-577-TIPS. Now to the Bronx, where a man is shot in the head and robbed in the Longwood section. This morning, police are looking for the suspect in connection to a robbery. This happened out in the Bronx. Happened yesterday afternoon on Westchester Avenue. Police say the 48 year old victim got into some kind of argument with the suspect. They say the suspect then displayed a gun and fired it several times, hitting the victim in the head and arm. Police say he then took off with the victim's cell phone and ran away. The victim was taken to the hospital where he is in serious but stable condition. If you have any information about this guy right here, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers 1 800 577 TIPS. And finally, in Williamsburg, the search is on for the suspect who attacked and robbed a 73 year old man. Police searching for a suspect in the beating and robbery of an elderly man in Brooklyn. It happened just before 2.30 yesterday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, inside a building near Hooper and South Fifth Streets. This is in Williamsburg. Police say a man approached the 73-year-old victim, put him in a chokehold, and then threw him to the ground. That suspect then removed the victim's wallet, which contained a debit card and $60 before leaving. The victim refused medical attention. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 1 800 577 TIPS. And that's this week's Crime in the City. Subscribe for more at youtube.com slash Fox5NY.